1993, you made Khalil Shaun, A Woman Under the Influence. Your first film? My thesis. Your thesis? At uh, Art Center College of Design. Can you say a few words about this film, which uh, was the first one, and according to me, uh, the most significant, or maybe one of the most significant films in your entire oeuvre. Really? And uh, the film which uh, was very inspiring for me to put on this show, the film wi which I think uh, to a large extent influences how this show in the castle looks like, uh, the film which I think relates very much to uh, the work which we produced, which we made together uh, for the exhibition in Łódź, uh, mm -hmm. for the uh, exhibition which was of Homecoming. Mm -hmm. uh, Podvorka, that's the film made in 2009, mm -hmm. which actually is going to receive a sort of certain sequel in a form of a character that uh, appeared mm -hmm. uh, in Podvorka and mm -hmm. uh, um, you befriended this character mm -hmm. and you remained in contact and this character is a sort of uh, uh, major figure of this exhibition and this character also uh, contributed with um, the name which was turned into a title of this exhibition, Milena Milena in the Castle. Milena Milena, yeah. 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 Um, well, it's, it's really interesting that you were so inspired by Khalil Shawn, a woman under the influence, because I haven't looked at it in so many years. And um, yeah, I really feel like that film was a period for me as an artist where things, um, where I, was um, for the first time really standing on my own two feet and felt like I was having the voice that I had been trying to have for a long time. Um, and the film, although it's about many different things, there is a, a beautiful element of play, which I think is really similar to Podoverka, um, kind of this resilience um, of children and um, and spontaneity. Um, a lot of that film, it was it was all directed um, the same way Podvorka was directed, but there were it was very much like me in collaboration with the children. Um, it is such a strong statement in a sense that uh, all those major characteristic future features for your entire style. Uh, were manifested or they they mm -hmm. appeared in there really? uh, and also uh, this word is very precious uh, in your work which is the tension between a photographic image and cinematic image mm -hmm. still and moving mm -hmm. right those uh, screenshots screen mm -hmm. tests of mm -hmm. Khalil and Shawn yeah. then they are really um, so significant for the structure of the whole film mm -hmm. and of course the structure itself mm -hmm. right uh, mm -hmm. Uh, very rigid, uh, mathematically composed, uh, um, and uh, the, the kind of narrative which is non-narrative yeah. in itself, right? Yeah. Because it's both, uh, it tells you the story though, right? It is also one of the very few films where you use text. Yeah, there was, there was actually um, a script right. written, so, and it's, yeah, and it's funny that it's going full circle now with the new project of Milena, that it's a script again through, through a child's voice. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And the point of departure for the Khalil Shawn in Woman Under the Influence was Casavage's film? Yeah, there's a scene of a mother tucking Jenna Rollins' character, uh, Mabel Longetti, tucking her son into bed. Um, after she's just had, um, she just came home from an institution and tried to kill herself. Um, and that scene I rewrote with um, my own text, but took kind, but was interested in this like tenderness between a, a mother and a child, um, where the child actually is worrying about the mother. And yeah, so, and, and, I mean, it seems kind of absurd, but it's actually really tender because Sean, you've just witnessed him getting all of this special effects makeup put on him that um, where he is, he is directing um, the makeup artist to 
where he wants this supposed disease to travel on his body. And in that section of the film, so it starts, he's in his underwear, you know, with no, no makeup, and slowly it gradually goes to full form, and then it reverses back to him having no makeup. And then the bedroom scene between um, Jennifer Hill and Sean, um, he is in the full makeup again. So you, it's like you understand that this is um, a complete fictional situation, but at the same time, something very real happens between them, especially in Sean when he says, I love you, you know, don't forget about me. Um, yeah, and that really has continued in my work. So when you watch this film again... It was so crazy because I hadn't seen it in years until right. you <laughs> told me. Why is this? Do you, well, do you never it, uh, perceive this film as something really extremely significant? for? No, uh, no. I mean, for me, it was a huge breakthrough. But it's a film that I made for the cinema. It's 16 minutes long. And I really see it not in conjunction, mm -hmm. like in a program with my other films. Like it needs its own kind of stage. And so for this show that we're screening it with the actual mm -hmm. Cassavetes film is the first time I've ever done that. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really exciting to be the trailer mm -hmm. for Cassavetes. If you look back upon uh, your career, 20 years almost, uh, Khalil, Sharon, Women Under Influence is 1993. Yeah, it was a different time uh, in the arts. Yeah. W yeah. Is there any other significant moment in the 90s or then later that you would consider as uh, the beginning of uh, something new or uh, something that is more intense than any other moments in your career, something that became formative for uh, mm -hmm. um, another moment that mm -hmm. cast a certain light? Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's this, I, you know, it's this something that comes up in my work a lot where it's taking a structure or um, like giving a makeup, giving two different makeup artists mm -hmm. packages, identical packages of my research. I was writing my thesis on medical photography and um, and horror films, and um, and so with all of that visual research that I had, mm -hmm. I gave the two makeup artists identical packages, and gave them no direction, and and then with the auditions, the children, you know, I gave um, workshops on French cinema, and then at the end, we reenacted the Truffaut scene from Small Change. So it's like something that's very playful, but, um, but it's so yeah. within this structure, there's this, element of play and we, we were really trying hard in order to show auditions in this exhibition it didn't work out mm -hmm. uh, but instead we are showing uh, untitled studies yeah, which, has never which been now when you told me about um, this reenactment I think untitled studies are reenactments of course too right and uh, in a way, ma oh, yeah. much more sincere in a sense that you reenact your own life, right? Mm. Because uh, there are certain rites of passage in your work, or kind of mm. exorcism, as I used to call it. Uh, and this is exactly the past or the childhood, mm. right? And in this case of Untitled Studies, it's not anyone's childhood, it's your own childhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah. C can you explain what Untitled Studies are about? Um, well, it's really funny because in my thesis exhibition, um, I had the cinematic film, Khalil Shawn, A Woman Under the Influence, um, on the evening of the opening and had two, a diptych in the show called Thomas Julia. Mm -hmm. And um, a, five photographs of Shawn. And my mother came to the to the thesis exhibition and surprised me. And as soon as she got there, she said, oh, you're, you're stealing my ideas, <laughs> like joking. And I, I was like, what are you talking about? She's not an artist. And she, um, you know, um, and she said, 
I have I have all of those photographs that I took of you and Laurie, my sister, from the back. And these two photographs were these two figures with their backs to the camera with mm -hmm. walking into this landscape. Mm -hmm. um, and it was at that point that I went back and looked at my mother's photographs and I made my first re-photographed photograph of my sister and my father that my mother directed and took with, you know, um, like a little brownie camera. And then, and my mom and I are really close and she's very involved in every project. I'm always talking to her about everything. And so every time I would go back to Maine, I would look into the, you know, all the boxes and all of the photographs and I would always find something that was not always, I mean, I think there's like 15 mm -hmm. since 93. Um, and I would always find images that related to certain ideas that I was having at the time, like either Pine Flat or um, Pine Flat Portrait Studio. I mean, when I did Pine Flat Portrait Studio and I was looking for an image for the book, my mother said, why don't you use the portrait of you one of the portraits of you from the portrait studio. And I, I didn't even remember, but when we were kids, my mother bought a package deal from a photographer that went door to door and where if you bought this leather album, you got to go to the portrait studio for five years mm -hmm. and your children could be photographed once a year. So there's these very formal portraits of my sister and I, and they're they're almost exactly the same composition as the Pine Flat Portrait Studio. So, yeah, I, I would I have never used the word autobiographical or any of this, and and yeah, and you're making me see things in a kind of a different way. And the studies I've never shown, you know. I think I'm not abusing this kind of no, interpretation. No, I mean I think it's really interesting for me to think about it this way because usually I'm like. Yeah, I deny that because my work also has this very objective kind of yeah. scientific or anthropological. For me, uh, all the time your work was very much about uh, a certain attachment to uh, whatever it is, a community, a nature, mm -hmm. a time, a season passing or something like that. And this attachment, for me at least, associates with home. Mm -hmm. That's why the right. uh, we done a number of shows yeah. but the one that is the most memorable at least for me is the rituals of homecoming yeah. here in this country yeah. my country uh, Poland right yeah. so and uh, and for this exhibition you uh, made one of the most sincere works uh, which is Podwórka mm -hmm. Courtyards uh, of Łódź uh, so I'm very pleased and happy about this mm -hmm. I'm just wondering, uh, um, because there are those uh, parallel lines in your work that of course intersect, which is uh, the, the narrative, however maybe it's wrong to use the word narrative, but there are people and there's time, yeah. right? So and there's a kind of real and abstract, mm -hmm. and those layers that uh, um, uh, sort of correspond one with another, and you um, sort of uh, depict the relationship or you kind of uh, uh, try to find tensions in between, you know, in how time flows and what is our viewer's experience of time mm -hmm. and uh, how people accommodate both time and nature, mm -hmm. right? And Pine Flat is mm -hmm. a good example of it. Mm -hmm. Pine Flat will be shown in a Kino Lab um, uh, during this exhibition. We show one of the protagonists of Pine Flat uh, mm -hmm. with a photograph of boy with guitar, and uh, um, we show an evidence of uh, 
those relationships that are being uh, uh, generated uh, during all your production times and processes because uh, Sharon uh, recorded an album with one of the guys, uh, Balam Garcia, mm -hmm. uh, from Pine Flood, and this album is sort of on view uh, within the exhibition. It has its mm -hmm. own exclusive uh, chamber. Yeah. Um, so if uh, you could say about this, because uh, I think um, uh, th those two uh, fields, people, communities, and time, uh, they uh, uh, also kind of cover uh, conceptual interest, uh, which is this reference to, uh, let's say, structuralist cinema and durational film mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the, the relationship between the real time and the viewed time or the recorded time. Mm -hmm. And then, then people, then, uh, which I would say also, uh, in a way, if you uh, look at work of nobody else but Warhol, which mm -hmm, was yeah. very much about community. Yeah, it yeah. was very much yeah, about yeah. filming those people he uh, was in a relationship with, or he was. Uh, there were there was hardly ever yeah, anyone yeah. accidental. They yeah. they created all the time those those communities, and I think there's the same. You never uh, photograph or film accidental people. Yeah, no, never. Um, so yeah. No, it's it's really about um, yeah. I mean, I truly see everything I do as a collaboration, and um, and an interest in in the person I'm working with, and it's not something that's very short lived at all. I mean, these relationships, have, most of them have continued through today. Yeah, but it's nice that you brought up Warhol because when I was um, first starting to make films, of course, I was thinking a lot about Warhol because it's this objective way of looking, but it's like such a loving mm -hmm. lens and and such a pleasure in looking. A passionate. And passionate, uh, yeah. yeah. But it's also like mixed. I mean, it also has a reading as something very clinical. So mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it's really um, quite similar. and. Yeah, and just this kind of permission to look, mm -hmm. to to spend time. Um, yeah, but I didn't really answer your question, but I think you answered it. <laughs> mm -hmm.